Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, a website, or an online store, make it with Squarespace. Today's episode of the Photo Breakdown is gonna be a little different because we have a guest today, so you're not actually gonna be seeing any of my photos, you're seeing photos by my friend Chris Visser. Chris is actually the person who suggested I start having guests on the Photo Breakdown, which I thought was an amazing idea, but he wanted to make sure I made it very clear that his intentions were not so that he could be on the show, he just thought it would be cool to hear from other people as well. So although it was not his intention, uh, he sent me some photos recently and I was like, we need to do a Photo Breakdown episode on that because because these photos are awesome. So this episode is going to be a little bit longer and it's going to be a little bit more like a mini podcast really because it's just us having a conversation back and forth about a handful of images from this particular shoot. And while we're on the subject of podcasts, I do want to mention my podcast, The Shoot, is coming back. I promise. I'm going to be moving into a new office space very soon where it's going to be a dedicated place for me to record my videos, start doing the podcast again, and I'm very excited about that. But trying to record a podcast here in the house with two very loud children. It's just not possible. It doesn't work. But as soon as I'm in the new office space, I will be bringing it back. So just sit tight. I appreciate the patience. It will be back soon. So anyway, I'm going to give you a little bit of information that Chris provided on this particular shoot that he did, and then we'll start rolling into the photos themselves. From a technical standpoint, everything he shot here was with the Nikon F100, the 50mm F1.8D, and Lomo 800. And all of these photos were processed and scanned by the Find Lab where he gets premium scans, so he's working one-on-one -on -one with a scanner and editor to dial in the look that he wants. Chris said there were a lot of firsts for him on this shoot as well, so it was his first time using the Nikon F100 on like a portrait session. It was his first time using Lomo 800 film, he had never shot that before. His first time working with Natalie, who was the model for these photos, and it was his first time doing a portrait session like that in a public, pretty busy area. And all of those things combined, he was pretty nervous about it, and he said he almost canceled the shoot because he had such bad anxiety about it, which I can totally relate with. But I'm really glad he pushed through it and went for it anyway because he came home with some really good photos. In terms of exposing, he set the meter to 400 on the camera instead of 800 just so he was on the side of overexposure by one stop just to give himself a little bit of clearance there. He also mentioned that he used the Nikon F100's matrix meter, just the built-in camera meter, and you're going to see that that thing is extremely accurate. You hear a lot of people talk a lot about the matrix metering from Nikon and how reliable it is, and these photos definitely prove that. So now with all of that information out of the way, let's jump over to the conversation where Chris and I dissect all these photos and talk about what worked and what didn't. So yeah, this first photo um, was from a setup where we originally had planned to start at the Ralph Lauren pink wall. But when we got there, like 5, 5.30, it was like everybody and their grandma was there to take their Instagram photo. Because it's a very, Melrose Avenue is just a very Instagrammable spot where there's lots of cool murals and some particularly iconic ones. So it didn't help my anxiety when we got there that like everybody was there. So, but we decided to walk a block down and we found this really cool wall that we did start, that we started with. Um, and, you know, what was great about it was that it was in it was an open shade so the sun was in the opposite direction behind so it lit everything up really nice and softly which i liked um so this first shot is a shot where i feel like i i didn't get exactly what i wanted i like the background i think natalie has a generally good pose i just feel like i failed on a directing level i didn't get the proper um hand placement and everything for me to like feel ha good about this shot um it's not terrible. It's just not exactly what I was going for. I was going for something a little bit more fashion style-y. That's kind of generally what this, like, you know, shoe was. It was, like, our experimentation and, like, fashion editorial. Nothing, not that I've ever done that, but that's kind of, we were like, we're on Melrose. Why not? Let's go for something fun like that. Um, and I just feel like this was, it's moving in that direction, but I didn't get it right. Whereas this next shot... I'm, I feel pretty good about this shot. Um, I do wish there's some things like I, I love the background. I love her expression. It's just cool. I love the glasses. I wish we had like fixed her hair. You know, I think, you know, on real shoots, they have a hair and makeup person who would look out for stuff like this, like her hair being, you know, more out of the way of the, the text on the jacket and the sunglass chain being out of the way. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this shot. Maybe I would have brought it slightly down, the framing slightly down, so we give it a little less headroom and let the jacket bottom clear a little better. But overall, I was pretty happy with it. 
And then this last shot was my favorite of this set. And this is kind of an outtake where um, Morgan and her boyfriend, we started without them and her, they were walking up and Natalie flashed these peace signs at them. And she, this is like Natalie's thing. Is she's always like flashing peace signs. And I just snapped this because it just felt, it felt like her. And when I got these scans, this was one of my favorite shots. I sent it to Morgan and I was like, I feel like this is Natalie's essence in a photo. And she's like, it totally is. And that felt really great to, to hear that from someone who knows her so well, you know, I've only, you know, known her for a short time, but I, I felt like this felt like so much like her and to get that confirmed from Morgan felt great to feel like, yes, I caught this moment that is so intrinsically her. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Cause uh, you know, something that with the other photos, you know, obviously, you know, you're you're directing her and going for something very specific, whereas just a really quick offhand thing that becomes, you know, what stands out about the photo and what really makes the photo, considering it being a portrait of somebody. Yeah. Um, I always kind of think of things like that as like little puzzle pieces where it's like, you know, one photo, you might really like the composition. Another photo, you might really prefer the light or the expression. And it's like if you could take some of your favorite elements of, you know, maybe four or five different images from a single shoot and put them all together into one photo, it's like, that would be the ideal thing. But oftentimes I, I come with, I come home with a lot of photos that I feel like have good elements where I, I really wish I could kind of combine everything into one photo. But, um, I think in a, in a situation like this, especially with a portrait, the expression and trying to really, capture that specific person that feels like such a an important aspect of it i feel like that should almost take priority at times you know what i mean for sure yeah there's like slight technical things i wouldn't love to change about this photo like you know i think she's got a little bit too much head i would probably be a little tighter i don't love the um the the concrete in the bottom right but again oh yeah yeah you know the and I, you know those are things I could probably I could crop this photo and it'd be fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah. I don't even like care about it that much because when I see like her expression and everything, that's what draws me in. Um, so those technical things kind of fall a little bit to the wayside, which I think you know that's something that you know you've talked about in your own in your own video where you had a while back about this stuff about um, what makes a good photo, a composition, lighting, you know, emotion moment. And, that, you know, this where I feel like the moment makes up for some of the technical things that might be lacking, at least for me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. And that's, again, I think that um, people probably all have their own opinion on what element really makes the photo, for sure. You know what I mean? I feel like that's mm -hmm. largely to uh, per personal preference, but... But yeah, that's interesting. Uh, what what about this next shot here? So this shot I actually really like, um, but uh, again, this was um, I didn't super get the exact moment I was looking for in this setup. Um, maybe if I got her, you know, I love like the the cactuses reflecting in her sunglasses. I think that's such a cool thing. Again, an expression. Um, I feel like I didn't get the exact right moment that I wanted. If her hair had been maybe blowing back a little bit more, or maybe when her hand was more on its downward trajectory after she had done it, it might have been better. But overall, I still really like this shot. Uh, but again, my favorite shot from this this whole uh, setup was another outtake moment. This was the last shot on this roll, and I was just like, just do something crazy. And she kind of <laughs> uh, like ran at the camera with this face. And I love this moment so much. Again, this feels like just like another like essence of Natalie shot. Um, and it's, again, one of my favorites from the shoot. Again, tech, from a technical aspect, you know, her fingers are coming in at the top and uh, her hair is all over the place. But again, I just love the moment and expression so much. I think for me... I love I love the light in that first shot, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from, from this particular set, that hard light, but it works so well. Mm -hmm. And I think probably with the sunglasses, obviously, that helps because she's not, um, you know, squinting or anything, but it just looks so clean for, yeah. for really hard light. Yeah, um, no. So to me, that's what that that's what stands out. But again, this is someone, you know, and so you have, you know, more of a, an idea of her personality. And so I can see why that second shot really jumps out because, you know, again, that, that kind of trumps, you know, some of the other elements, you know, yeah, yeah. having that actual 
personality and, and expression there. That's awesome. For sure. This shot I love. I like the wider angle. Um, I don't mind the dappled like sh uh, shadows from the foliage. I like her expression. I just think, it's, again, it feels kind of effortless from her. The one issue I have with this shot, I mean, I might, if I was being super like specific, bring her glasses up slightly. But the one issue I have is that her hair at the top, just that like little like rainbow that happened. Um, yeah, yeah. And again, if there was like, if this was a real shoot and there was hair and makeup, that probably doesn't happen. Um, it's not in the next shot of her, but I think, I don't know if that's my head that's creating a shadow at her bottom. I, and I just, I like this shot. I like her expression, but I think the other shot, the wider shot works better. So the last shot is just, you clone out that hair. <laughs> and so you don't see yeah. <laughs> and this is a I quick was quote ask because i'm like i was like i was looking at it and i thought man did you like catch that on the shoot and then go back and like reshoot the exact same no. thing because uh, <laughs> i wish but yeah but that's the thing and in, in a in a situation like this you know i think there's there's a lot of debate about how much is too much when it comes to editing and removing mm -hmm. things and um, there was like a lot of controversy with Steve McCurry and everything with him, you know, doing a lot of heavy retouching and removing elements from a photo. And I can see the debate in a situation like that, whereas something like this, where it's hair or a blemish or anything like that, I don't see anything wrong with taking care of something like that. Because sure. that's, it, that's not what the photo is about, obviously. Yeah, you know? and, I think and it, it has a much better look generally portraits a portrait session or something where we're going for something especially with this could we were kind of going for like an editorial kind of shoot uh yeah yeah that's not documentary it's not street where like you want to preserve what was there in the moment you know for sure yeah no i i think that looks great i think that's awesome uh now the next photo th this i think was the one that jumped out at me like more than any others right off oh, the bat yeah um, the the light in this photo the composition everything about this just is this is probably my favorite photo from oh, the entire set i thanks, love <laughs> like everything about this photo <laughs> yeah i think it like i took this shot like four times and this was my favorite this might have been the first one um but i i love that you're getting the sun as a catch light in her uh, in her eyes which is always so great with yeah. portraits um, we were, sh I, it was right next to that wall. There was all these plants. So we, I was like, get up next to the plant and I'm going to shoot through it. Cause I love doing that with portraits, with portrait sessions and seeing yeah, what happens. Yeah. And oftentimes it doesn't turn out great, but this one I really liked. And I think that the way, I don't even know if it was intentional on my part, but like the, the branch that's the most out of focus on her face is, so, is it's so close and soft and out of focus that it doesn't contrast you know it doesn't take away from her it's interesting because it's obviously you're shooting in very hard light but as soon as i saw this i was like and maybe it has something to do with the out of focus elements you know in in the foreground there maybe that is softening softening things up but that's that was the first thing i thought of i was like this just feels like such a soft and like i don't know like a gentle kind of portrait yeah maybe it's the expression with the softness of like the out of focus areas, I don't know what it is, man, but I, and even the color too, because you have some of that brown golden kind of color on not only the branches, but the light hitting her hair, the light hitting the rim of the glasses, like it mm -hmm. all just, the color in this is so just soft and like pleasing. Um, really, really love that shot, man. That's, awesome. that's awesome. And even the white, the white of her shirt playing off the white in the background, it's just, uh, yeah, man, that, that shot really just stood out to me. I loved that. Awesome. Well, appreciate it. So this this shot is my favorite. This first sunglass shot is my favorite shoot of the whole shoot. Um, you know, just the moment I feel like, like when I was showing my wife, she's like, oh, you could sell sunglasses with that shot. <laughs> I was like, yeah. that's kind of what it feels like to me. It was, we were walking and there was this like garage overhang and it was just cut the light was just cutting this perfect you know beam and i was like we're gonna put your head in the light uh and that's kind of what yeah, happened yeah. here and we took um some shots of her facing the other way and her shots looking over this way and you know throughout the shoot she kept would like you know adjusting or touching her glasses and i got a lot of those shots this was my favorite moment of that and just i love the harsh light 
I love the way that her glasses look, her expression, just everything about this shot I really, really responded to. Um, and I think, you know, th- this next shot, she's just looking off. And I think it, it's f- it works well enough, but I think that extra element of her hand being up touching the glasses is what brings that shot to that next level. And that's what makes the moment. The hand being there, I feel like, really makes you focus on the sunglasses, you know? Right. It, it really, it's like all these leading lines of like the shadow coming down, the ar- her arm coming up, m- drive you to those sunglasses as a focal point, and I really loved that. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was going to point out, because looking at the photo with the hand up and the hand down, the hand up, uh, not only is it pointing, you know, it's, it's drawing your attention to the sunglasses, and so is that other line there, uh, the two together, it really does just add so much more just kind of rhythm to the photo. You know what I mean? In, in terms of composition, like that line continues from the top right down over to the sunglasses, across the sunglasses, down to her arm, and then down to the, the bottom left corner. And it just has so much more motion to it than, you know, the, the second photo. So I, I totally agree. I think that first the first photo is awesome. And the next two shots as well, where they're uh, similar, but also, you know, they're, they're both pretty close, but still at different distances here. Yeah. And, um, and so I'm, I know which one I like more. I'm curious to hear which one you like. So more. I much prefer the closer one to this one. Uh, Same. I so I, I, I brought these to compare because, like, I love this moment. Natalie was we were just talking about something and she looked off and I was like, don't move. This is great. Like that's something I find in a lot of porch sessions I I've had is that I will, will just be doing something. My model or or subject will be like, just do something random, like move their feet, look a certain way. And I'm like, Oh, that looks great. I'm don't even have my camera up, but I can just see what they're doing. will look cool. And so that was one of these moments and I was like, don't move, just look off like you are. And I loved it. And then I stepped back and got a little wider, and I don't like this as much. Like, obviously, there's, like, cars in the background more, more obviously distracting from, like, the moment. And I um, I don't love the way I had her hands positioned. So I feel like either cropping yeah. in or getting this closer shot, which I feel like the light's slightly better, too, in the close-up. Um, just all the elements work much yeah. better in the close-up than they do in this slightly wide, wider version. Yeah, there's there's something about the way her hands are. Um, I don't know if it's because of, like, seeing, like, her knuckles like that. Almost, It almost adds, like, a tense kind of feeling sure. to it. Sure. Whereas that first one feels so much more... Yeah, it, um, it feels peaceful or light, soft or lighter. something, yeah. I probably wouldn't publish the second one, but I definitely would share this this one. I think I have shared this one on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, that, that first one. That was another one of them that really stood out to me from the start was uh, yeah. the first one of that, the closer one. I just That one jumped out at me right away. There's just something about the expression in her, in her face that I feel like really... Uh, is striking. While not... Be, it's not like a striking pose, but there's just something you know, catching in it. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's got a very like cool and I think distinct look about herself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it works. And I, I don't know if it's like her facial features, like the, the jawline there and the fact that she's turned and it just, I don't know. It's really, uh, it works really, really well. That kind of, you know, looking off to the side thing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for, for hopping on here and sharing, you know, the ones that you think work and don't work. I know for a lot of people that can be a little intimidating to kind of share that kind of stuff. You know, a lot of people only want to share the highlights and what they think is the absolute best, but well, anybody I, can relate to this. I think. I'm definitely you know? second guessing sharing some of it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I, I think promise. even like, uh, while you're, sh- I'm sharing it while I feel great about these shots and I'm like, these are my favorites, even in the moment, in this moment, I'm like, but am I wrong? <laughs> and the answer is no. I am right about what I like, you know, and I think that this is a this is important to like trust your gut about things that you like about your own work because there's always gonna be forces that are telling you you're wrong. Um and it's okay to get constructive feedback. And I welcome constructive feedback on this set. Like I'm always trying to improve, but I also think it's really important to like when you when you like something that you did don't shy away from it. I think it's really easy to be like, to get, you know, get caught up in like, you know, I really like this, but am I wrong? Oh, there's just something I won't like. Are people going to think I'm stupid or whatever, you know? 
and something I feel like is great is that generally the film community is not like that. At least as you know, a lot of the places I have found people are generally pretty supportive, but it is the internet and there are always going to be people who are, who are dicks. Um, but I think, you know, stick to your guns. If you like your work, be proud of it. For sure. I totally agree, man. That's what I was going to say. I promise you are not alone in, in feeling that way because I second guess every single photo that I take. So <laughs> yeah. I totally get that. Cool. Um, but yeah, no, this was this was fun. I'm glad uh, I'm glad we were able to do this. So I'm definitely going to try and get some more guests on here soon. So I appreciate you being the, <laughs> the guinea pig here. No worries. Happy to be. Before we wrap things up, I want to take a second to thank our sponsor once again, which is Squarespace. I've personally been using Squarespace for my own website, and I've been recommending it to people for years, long before they ever actually became a sponsor of the channel because their service is that good. They have tons of templates to choose from that all look great, and it's extremely easy to use, but even if you do run into an issue, they have award-winning 24-7 customer service that's always willing to help. If you'd like to try a free trial of Squarespace, you can do so at squarespace.com, but if you want to get signed up, I can save you 10% off your first purchase if you sign up at squarespace.com slash mattday. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the photo breakdown. I know it was a lot different because I had a guest and it was a lot longer because of that, but I enjoy this kind of format where it's just two people having conversation back and forth about the photos. And I hope you guys learned something here or gained some inspiration from it. If you did, definitely let me know in the comments down below or share any of your own questions or comments or critiques. As Chris mentioned, we'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.